Welcome to the Quick Pro Guide for the Juice Link Riggy Assist Low Noise Preamplifier. We're going to show you how this little device can help you capture professional quality audio right on your DSLR camera. Let's get started. To get the most of your preamp, you'll want to know all of the parts and what they do. Let's start with this side. Here we have three XLR inputs, a left channel one, a left channel two, and a right channel. Each of these inputs can supply 12 or 48 volt phantom power for powered condenser microphones. On the front of the preamp, we have an eighth inch stereo output. Use the supplied stereo mini jack cable to connect this output to your camera mic input. Some cameras use a 2.5 millimeter mini jack. If yours does, you'll need to purchase an optional 3.5 millimeter to 2.5 millimeter cable. These three knobs are the volume adjustments for the left channel one, left channel two, and the right channel. Use these knobs to control the input level for your microphones. This is the headphone volume control and mono headphone jack. Note that we said mono headphone jack. The left and right channels will be mixed together and play in both sides of the headphones instead of routing the left channels to the left ear and the right channel to the right ear. Juice Link has done this because it makes it easier to monitor the overall mix. Also note that when your headphones are plugged into your Riggy Assist, that you are not actually listening to the audio that is being recorded on your camera, but rather the audio from your preamp. If your camera has a headphone jack, you may want to use it instead so you can be sure that you're monitoring the audio that is actually being recorded. If your camera doesn't have a headphone jack, you can simply play back your recording to verify that the audio was captured properly. This is the power switch. When turned on, the power indicator LED will be illuminated. Below the power switch is the low battery indicator. When your battery is running low on power, this indicator will glow in red. This is the camera's audio meter. You'll need to calibrate the audio meter with your camera before you can accurately use the meter. We'll discuss this a little later. Once calibrated, you can use this meter to help set your volume for each channel and to monitor your overall audio levels. On the back, you'll find the battery compartment. The Riggy Assist takes a standard 9-volt battery. On the top is the mounting screw. To mount your preamp to your camera, simply align the mount screw with your camera's tripod hole and use the included Allen wrench to tighten it up. Also on the back of the camera are two screw holes that you can use to attach an optional mounting bracket, which allows you to mount accessories like a wireless receiver or microphone or whatever you need. On the bottom of the preamp, you'll find a tripod mounting hole. You can use this to attach your preamp to a tripod or another support device. And finally, here is what I refer to as the control center of the Riggy Assist. Let's go over each of these switches in detail. First, for each channel, we have a mic line switch. You'll generally leave this switch set to mic. However, if you switch it to line, it will insert a 40 decibel pad, allowing you to connect a higher output signal to your preamp, such as the output from a mixing console. Below the mic line switches are the gain switches for each channel. You'll want to leave these switches set to high unless you are in a very loud environment, like a rock concert, for example. If your input level is almost all the way down and you're still getting a signal that's too hot, you could switch these out of the high setting to give you more headroom. This switch will turn on the phantom power. You can choose 12 volt or 48 volt. Try to use the smallest voltage that your mic will allow in order to conserve battery life. These switches will allow you to turn the phantom power on or off for each individual channel. Take great care not to apply phantom power to anything other than a condenser mic which requires it, or you might risk damaging your equipment. It says so right here on the sticker, so don't forget it. Below the phantom power section, you have the lithium polymer alkaline switch. If you're using standard alkaline batteries, switch it to alkaline. If you are using rechargeable lithium polymer batteries, then set it to lithium poly. 
This will tell the preamp when to kick on the low battery light based on the type of battery you're using. Below that is the meter off on switch. Many cameras have audio meters built in. If so, you can turn the meter on your preamp off in order to conserve battery power. Over here we have the automatic gain control disable switch. Many cameras will allow you to adjust input volume manually, but some do not. Instead, they use automatic gain control, or AGC. Automatic gain will sense volume changes and adjust the gain automatically. This is a bummer because it denies you the ability to control your volume manually. To override auto gain, the Riggy Assist will trick your camera by sending a high output signal to the right channel of the camera. The camera will sense the loud signal and automatically turn its gain down, allowing you to replace it with the super clean gain from the Juiced Link low noise preamp on the left channel. Now, since the preamp is sending a constant high gain signal to the camera's right input, you'll only be able to record usable audio on the left input. So down here, you'll want to switch the normal pan left switch to pan left. This will cause the preamp to route both left channels and the right channel to the left input of the camera, reserving the right channel for the high gain trickery. In order to use the auto gain disable, you must have this switch set to pan left. That's why they're both red, to remind you. If your camera has manual gain controls, then you won't need this feature. This is the stereo mono switch. If set to stereo, the left and right channels of the preamp will be separated and routed to the left and right channels of the camera, respectively. If set to mono, both left and right channels will be mixed together and sent to both the left and right channels of the camera. This switch is also used in conjunction with the right out minus 16 decibel on off switch. I prefer to call it the audio bracketing switch. Audio bracketing is where you record two channels of the same audio source, one with optimal audio settings and the other a little quieter. By doing this, you can ensure that if your main audio channel clips due to some unanticipated level increase, you still have a backup channel that was recorded with a little lower gain and probably didn't clip. This technique has saved my butt more than once and is indispensable in situations where you need to get the audio right with no second chances. To use audio bracketing on the Riggy Assist, simply set the stereo mono switch to mono and the audio bracketing switch to on. Again, these are both color-coded to remind you that they work together. Now, all of your audio will be routed to both the left and right inputs of the camera, and the right input will have a 16 decibel pad for the safety track. Thanks, Riggy. This is the left channel to right channel on off switch. If you will only be using a single mic, plug it into the left channel one and turn this switch to the off position. It will cut the power to the unused channels and conserve your battery power. These are the meter high low switch and meter high low potentiometers. These are used in conjunction with each other to calibrate the meter on your preamp with the audio meter on your camera. If you go to juicelink.com and dig around, you'll find a great video showing you exactly how to calibrate the meter, so we'll skip that information here. Finally, this is the enclosure ground lift switch. Your camera is grounded to the preamp via the shielding in the stereo mini jack connection. Depending on how you mount your camera to the juice link, you may get a second ground connection. This would be feasible, say, if you had the camera and the preamp connected to the same rig via the silver tripod mounting holes. This can cause a hum or buzz in your audio. If this happens, you can set the ground lift switch to the lift position and the circuitry from the preamp will be electrically isolated from the ground of the preamp enclosure, eliminating one of the ground connections and thus eliminating the hum or the buzz. Most often, this switch will be set to the normal position. Note that if you have this switch set to the lift position when there is no second ground connection, you will disable the preamp's phantom power. This is because the XLR connector pulls its ground from the preamp enclosure. 
And if the switch is set to lift, then the XLR connector will need to get its ground from the camera. Also note that if the stereo mini jack is disconnected from the camera while the switch is in the lift position, that the phantom power will also be disabled. And there you have it, a full tour of the Juiced Link Riggy Assist Low Noise Preamp. Thanks for watching.